I've got experience with this topic from a number of different angles. How do I keep from going crazy living with my in-laws? Let's hit four practical steps today and the last one is really powerful. The first step I want to share with you has to do with choice. And this can change the game. You have to see it as a choice if you want to feel differently about it. If you really want to stay away from going crazy or for feeling crazy, see it as a choice. Now, most people who are living with the in-laws or your parents, as the case may be, it's because of life circumstances that have it such that, well, that's the best option for you right now. I've had people tell me before, well, it's not really a choice. I can't live anywhere else. Um, yeah, you could. You could live out under the viaduct, down by the freeway. You could live in the city park. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Those are not legitimate options. This is the only option I have. Well, if you compare it to homelessness, this is a better choice, isn't it? The key is not so much talking yourself out of the discomfort or the challenges that you're having in that setting. It's acknowledging that you are there by choice and this changes the game for you psychologically. You choose to be here. What this does for you is it gets you out of the trapped feeling because if you're there by choice, then you don't have to be there. This doesn't just apply to your living circumstances. Students, for example, who say, I have to go to school. Do you? What if you don't? Oh, well, then all these other negative things would happen in my life. Okay, so you're choosing that over the negative consequences. It's the same concept. Get clear about your choice. That's the starting place. Your second strategy has to do with communication. Keep those lines of communication open. This is important in any relationship. If you're living with family, it's especially important because of some of the other dynamics that come in when we're sharing space. These are people that you hopefully want to preserve a relationship with beyond the temporary situation of your living in their home. Clear, open communication is one of the best ways to sustain those relationships. And let's get past the trite, fluffy, superficial, inauthentic kinds of communication that happen. Best example I can think of, when we do a greeting. Hey, how are you? Oh, fine. Okay, now, that is so superficial and it doesn't even really give inf any information. I use that as an example because sometimes it's tempting to stay on the surface and to be superficial and phony about it. I think authenticity is going to go a long way toward helping you to resolve some of the conflicts that could possibly come up. When we say, how are you? It's not even communication so much as a greeting, right? We don't mean, hey, tell me how you are. We mean, hi. And saying, oh, I'm fine is not even a response. It's simply saying, hi back. <laughs> We've gotten into these patterns of communication through repeated practice, and it doesn't serve us well in this situation. So let's practice being authentic and genuine, speaking truth and doing it in a diplomatic way. There's other strategies, obviously, to communication, but that is going to make a big difference for you. Keep those lines of communication open. I told you earlier that I know this from different perspectives. I am the in-law. <laughs> I am the one, my son and his wife are living in my basement right now. He's going to flight school. It saves them some money that he can apply toward his schooling and as they raise their new little baby. So they're living in my home right now. I know that communication is important because if they are having an issue about something that we're doing that imposes on their space or their freedom or their privacy, we need to know that because we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna put them in an uncomfortable position. Now, if they pretend that everything's okay and peachy and how you doing, fine, then we never get to the issues that are happening. We've been able to come up through the communication, we've been able to come up with different ways of 
respecting each other's space, for example. We have a common entrance to our part of the house and their part of the house, and so we cross paths quite often. And it would be really easy to just kind of sprawl out into each other's space. Well, we had some communication about that as they said, hey, we kind of need to have our privacy. We need to have our little home within your home. And of course we understand that and we're going to respect it. But the point is, it has to be communicated. Don't assume that people are going to automatically know what it is that you need. I've got two more thoughts for you, but before we get there, you've probably thought of someone else who would really benefit from this. Would you please share the video? And while you're here, click on that subscribe button. Here's another concept that I think is really helpful. There's no such thing as free lunch and there is no such thing as free rent, all right? I told you about my son and his wife that are living in our basement. We're not charging them dollars for rent. We don't expect any money or currency to come from them because we're trying to support them financially right now while they get through school. But they are paying rent nonetheless. Let's talk about rent for a moment. As you understand that there's no such thing as free rent, you get to pay for your space. Now, how do you pay for it if there's not an actual contract and an agreement where you pay a certain number of dollars every month? Well, you're paying for it through expectations and culture and tradition and the different elements of value that create value for your landlord. In this case, I'm the landlord. What do I value? Well, I value that my kids are able to get through their schooling without too many burdens. So they're kind of paying the rent by paying attention to and moving forward with their schooling. If that makes sense, you can, you can see that it's not necessarily money that's being requested, but there will be expectations too. I remember uh, working with Bill and Diane, their adult daughter was still living in their home at the time. And uh, her husband was going through some schooling program. It was very similar to what we we're going through. Well, what Bill and Diane really valued was being able to have a dinner with their daughter and her husband every Sunday. Well, the daughter and her husband weren't necessarily interested in doing that every week, but that's part of their rent. If you get good at the communication part, you can actually have these conversations to get clear about, hey, what do you really value and how can we provide that to you as rent? But if you don't have the communication in place, pay attention to what it is that they want or what they really value as you provide that to them. That's the way you're paying the rent. Let me tell you real quick about Josh too. Josh and his wife were in a transition. They were living with her parents. Josh was expressing some frustration in a coaching session that I had with him about some of the quirky expectations that were going on in the home. He didn't like living there. He didn't see it as a choice. I took him through some of these strategies that I'm sharing with you, and that was helping to change his mind about it. But I asked him a question. I said, Josh, what if I could find you a place where you could work in a part-time job for only three hours a week and it would pay all of your housing expenses. Would you be interested in that job? And he's like, well, yeah, where can I, there's no jobs like that. How can I get a job like that? I said, you've got it already, but you're not doing the work. What if you were to put in three hours a week serving and doing the things that your in-laws would really appreciate or like you to do? And he started realizing, oh yeah, you know, my, my father-in-law takes care of the lawn every week, but I could do that. I could totally do that. See, now he's on track for paying the rent a little better. And it, it, it helps the relationships, but it also helps you if you're in that position, it helps you to feel like you're actually doing what's required to sustain your own family. And that has some psychological impacts as well. Here's the last strategy that was taught to me by my daughter actually, back when she was in junior high and she was running a little late in the morning and she didn't quite catch her bus to the junior high. And this is a couple of miles to the junior high. So I knew that she'd need a ride to get there on time. And I had some time available, so I was willing to offer that. 
And I said, hey, sweetie, I'll take you to school this morning. And she said, oh, okay, uh, thanks, Dad. And then she went and hurried and got ready, and then we got in the car. As I'm driving her to the junior high, she apologized two or three times before we got clear down to the end of the block. And how am I feeling as a father? I'm feeling, this isn't fun, listening to my daughter. She's like, oh, I should have got up earlier, and I'm so sorry, and I, I, I need to do better. Okay, this isn't fun energy for me when it's apologetic. And so I, I made a suggestion that she picked up on immediately. I said, sweetie, uh, gratitude. She's like, okay. She gathered herself a little bit and she said, dad, thank you so much for taking me to school this morning. <sighs> so much better. That's almost like a paycheck. As a dad, I'm like, Wow, thank you for being appreciative of, of my efforts and my desire to serve you, you know? That's the paycheck. So here's the strategy that I learned from my junior high daughter. Gratitude, not guilt. Gratitude, not entitlement. Gratitude, not apologies. Gratitude, not, oh, we don't want to intrude on your space. I practice the gratitude. It's the most powerful paycheck that you can give. That becomes part of your rent, actually. Gratitude. Hey, if you found this helpful and you're really looking for some other ideas about self-care, especially if you are a parent or a young parent, click on this next video to get some tips about how to care for yourself as a parent. I think you're going to like it.